In a small hamlet in New Mexico, 3,000 people reside. Dulce is a quite unassuming place, except for one thing. It has the most UFO sightings per capita in the world. The locals in that area have always seen the space people, as they call them. They're just part of life there, but that's not all. Inside the Arcaluta Mesa, something chilling resides, a place that locals will not go near. A seven-story underground military facility used as an alien testing center. Here is a widely circulated photo allegedly exposing the horrors inside Dulce Base. A photo taken by a security guard at the facility, Thomas Costello. But we aren't experimenting on them. They are experimenting on us. Welcome to the James Linker Experience. This is where Dulce is on the map for any of you interested, but don't go there unless you want your innards experimented on by aliens. All right, Jeff, how's your summer? Could have gone better, Mike. In the 1970s, a series of strange events started happening in Dulce. Cows were turning up dead, not unusual in itself, but it was how the cows were being killed that was completely bizarre. Local policeman Gabe Valdez was sent to investigate. He found cows that had all their blood drained, with no traces of blood anywhere on the ground around the dead cows. Organs had been surgically removed, scorch marks in the surrounding area and weird shaped triangular footprints in the ground. The cows weren't decomposing and no predator or other cow would go near them. This phenomenon happens alongside UFO sightings. Cows dying in strange ways at the same time that UFOs are seen in the sky. And it's not just a Dulce. This has been documented all around the United States, all around the world. Whilst investigating, Officer Valdez reported seeing sophisticated spacecraft in the skies of Dulce. But there was more. The evidence that was left there, you know, predators don't leave gas masks, glow sticks, radar chaff. Officer Valdez was convinced that somehow the US government was involved. The FBI's official report was that the cows died of predator attack. Case closed. 17 cows were found to have been killed in this bizarre way. One cow was found with a dead fetus inside it, but it wasn't a calf. Officer Valdez described it as looked like a human, a monkey and a frog. That's often how I'm described. The news of these bizarre cattle deaths spread far and wide and caught the attention of Albuquerque businessman and physicist Paul Benowitz. Paul set up his electronics company in Albuquerque and worked with agencies such as the US Air Force. He even established his lab next to Kirtland Air Force Base. He was basically a very smart scientist with money to spend. Paul's involvement with the government and ultimately his tragic death is a very dark story. But that's for another video. Paul's interest in UFOs was sparked after recording strange signals using his equipment that he believed were alien in origin. In 1979, Paul met Officer Valdez, who told him about the bizarre cattle deaths. They struck up a friendship and stayed in close contact to discuss anything they may come across. Then came the case of Myrna Hansen in 1980, who whilst driving home at night in New Mexico, saw two UFOs in the sky she then saw a cow being lifted into a UFO through a beam of light. She lost consciousness and then woke up hours later in her car. Aware that time was missing, Myrna sought help. She undertook hypnotic therapy to remember what happened. Myrna remembered being taken to an underground facility by aliens with gray skin. She saw body parts floating in tubes of bubbling liquid and eerily she saw humans working alongside the aliens. The aliens performed a procedure on Myrna and she described a device being implanted into her body, something that could easily be verifiable. Sure enough, when Myrna underwent an x-ray at a local medical facility, at the base of her neck was found a small mass. This was the story that turned Paul Benowitz from curious to obsessed. He believed Myrna and after speaking to government insiders that he knew and intercepting electronic signals he believes were coming from below the ground in Dolce, Paul made the incredible claim in 1982 that the Dolce base was real. He even published a report called Project Beta in 1988 detailing how to infiltrate the facility. Famed pilot John Lear, son of the creator of the Learjet, confirmed with four independent sources that the Dolce base does exist. Grey ones, they're about uh, four and a half feet tall. And we see the ones that uh, are called the Nordics. They're about seven feet tall, look like us. Fun story so far, but I want photos of the base and the aliens. I showed one at the start of the video from Thomas Costello. 
Costello was allegedly a security guard in Dolce Base up to 1979, where he got to the point that he could no longer live with the things that he was seeing. He stole a set of papers from the base and released them to the public known as the Dolce Papers. He also took 30 black and white photos from inside the base. Here is one of these photos, allegedly taken inside Dolce Base and released by Thomas Costello. And here's another one showing two gray aliens walking alongside a human male. Costello also gave a detailed account of what was happening inside the base. Level one was security and communication. Level two, human staff housing. Level three, execs and labs. Level four, mind control experiments. Level five, alien housing. Level six, genetic experiments. And level seven, cryogenic storage. Level seven is described as Costello as row after row of thousands of humans and human mixture remains in cold storage. Sounds lovely. Harvesting organs, genetic experimentation, mind control. Dulce Base is truly a place of horrors. The cow by Gabe Valdez found with the hybrid fetus inside comes to mind. They were experimenting in Dulce Base trying to create hybrid species. Costello's information comes from an interview known as a Branton interview. For you nerds who want to read it, you can find it online. He states that there are thousands of gray aliens at the facility and other alien races also who are organized into a hierarchy, all reporting to the ruling class, the reptilians. David Icke entered the chat. They evolved on Earth and they were the ones that built the underground tunnels and the base. Costello went into hiding and has since died. Now, whilst all of this is intriguing, it's fun, electronic signals, alleged photos, cow mutilations, an alleged abductee victim, it doesn't prove the existence of Dulce Base. For that, you would need something like an engineer who actually was involved in building the base. Yep. I'm Phil Schneider. Uh, I spent 17 years in black budget programs, um, government geologist as engineer, structural engineer. In 1995 at the Preparedness Expo, engineer Phil Schneider came forward as a whistleblower to expose something incredible. On the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. You can see Phil Schneider's full presentation on YouTube. He explains that back in 1979, as an explosive expert and engineer, he was hired to help build underground shafts in Dulce. Yep right around the time of the weird cattle deaths and UFO sightings. As the construction team were drilling into the Mesa, their equipment was breaking. Phil had to go down to see what was going on. Phil entered the elevator shaft to descend into the facility. He noticed a very strict military presence, green berets, black berets, NATO forces, all armed. He knew something wasn't right. As he reached the bottom of the elevator shaft, the doors open. Was sitting a seven foot tall alien gray the stench was worse than the worst garbage can. In complete panic, Phil draws his gun and shoots the alien and kills it. I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. This creates absolute chaos and a firefight erupts between the aliens and the human soldiers. The aliens were using what Phil describes as a plasma weapon, Halo. All I can think at this point is Halo. Burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt. Phil lost two of his fingers in the firefight, but he was lucky. 60 people lost their lives at what is known now as the Battle of Dulce Base. What was later explained to Phil was that the US military, whilst trying to build their underground facility, had accidentally drilled into an alien base hundreds of years old. Maybe they could have explained that to him before he went in there, just a thought. And the military had no choice. Go to war with the aliens they found or cooperate with them. They would give us advanced weaponry and technology and all we had to give them was us. Things well hidden from the American public. Our black budget, for instance, garners one point 023 trillion dollars every two years. Basically money that the US government can spend and they don't have to tell anyone how they spent it. Right now there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. Phil stated that there are several alien species living on Earth 
and that we have treaties with them. And as part of these treaties, we allow them to take some of us for experimentation. They use the glandular secretions of animals and human beings as a mixture of the vitamins for their food. They get high off of our adrenal gland. The gray aliens are struggling with a genetic disorder and by consuming secretions from our glands, they can keep themselves healthy. They're milking us basically, like fitness influencers. In other words, in the autopsies, of which I have two, we found out that their digestive system is atrophied. They, don't, they can't eat through their mouth anymore. They take the uh, hormones and the enzymes from those cattle and they spread it on their skin and their skin absorbs the nutrients. If we look at Thomas Costello's photo, the alien does look really frail and weak. The good news is that Phil claims that the alien race wants to completely take over the world by 2029 and wipe most of us out. So don't worry. The bad news ones, there are nine races of alien populations to look at a human being as a bag of food. By coming forward and giving these public lectures, Phil knew he would become a target and he feared for his life. Some of his friends were suddenly dying, all ruled suicide. And Phil made a point to tell his family, if you ever find me dead, I did not kill myself. In January 1996, as Phil was touring the country exposing Dulce Base, his body was found in his apartment. The official cause of death, suicide. Phil's body was found with a medical tube wrapped around his neck three times and tied in a knot. My spidey senses are going off. Not the easiest or most painless way to kill yourself. I mean, Phil did have a gun and pills in the apartment, but things get weirder. The deputy medical examiner refused to visit the scene. Very unusual as it's required by law. The blood and urine samples taken from Phil's body were never tested. And yes, the samples went missing. No photographs of the scene were taken and all his belongings were gone. His documents, his notes, everything pertaining to his professional life, gone. Then an obituary appeared in the local paper saying he died from a stroke. As unusual as that is considering he had a medical tube tied around his neck, what is even more unusual is that Phil's family didn't write it. So then who did and why? So what proof do we have that Dulce Base exists? To this day, there is no solid proof, no hard evidence that it does. Gabe Valdez really did investigate weird cattle death. We have photos to prove that. And the cattle deaths are perhaps one of the most genuinely bizarre things that we have happening. These deaths are certainly not from predators, organs removed, surgical cuts, blood drained without any traces of blood left around the body, no predator footprints, in or around the body. The cattle deaths are genuinely weird. Myrna, the alleged abduction victim of experimentation inside Dulce Base, again whilst a chilling story, it's just that. As far as I'm aware, there's no x-ray to actually look at to confirm any implant. And indeed, it was said that the doctors at the time thought that the mass may just be naturally occurring, but they weren't sure. All we have is her words, and we know that hypnotic therapy can have limitations, such as the hypnotist asking leading questions. Thomas Costello is an interesting one. There is no record of a security guard called Thomas Costello working in the military or around Dulce. This photo that is credited to Thomas and circulated widely is fake. It is a still taken from the Arnold Schwarzenegger film The Sixth Day. What it is is an example of how the Dulce Base story has been taken by people and given a life of its own on the internet. It was a woman called Anne West who was receiving information from Thomas Costello, but in reality, it may not have been. People claim that fiction writer Tal Levesque may have been Thomas Costello or that just Thomas Costello was completely made up. Many of the details we have online when reading this story are simply fantasy. And because people are adding and adding to the story, it's very hard to find the root of the story. It muddies the water, basically. These photos, again, there's no way to verify that these are real photos taken at Dulce Base. I mean, even if it wasn't Thomas Costello who released them, they do look creepy. Phil Schneider was a government contractor. That is valid. But an engineer with a loaded gun at a work site? sounds a bit peculiar. There are also other peculiarities with his story. For example, he states that foreign military were at the base when he was drilling, but would the US Army allow that? A college roommate of Phil claims that he lost his fingers when he was young, working as an electrical lineman, not drawing a gunfight with aliens. And Phil was caught lying about other things, such as his father's military history. Does that mean that Phil is lying about Dulce Base? Well, no, 
but it doesn't add to his credibility. Phil Schneider had a history of mental illness, which is deeply sad, but may have played a part in his creation of the Dulce Bay story. But he really did have cancer, and he genuinely did die in bizarre circumstances. To this day, the story of Dulce Base just won't go away, and people are trying to gain proof of his existence. Ben Hansen, former military and now UFO program presenter, visited the area where Dulce Base is purported to be. He spoke to locals who clearly state that they see UFOs entering the top of the Mesa. They see the space people all the time. They are in no doubt that it is real. And Ben Hansen found a heat signature coming from the mountain, Dulce Base, an underground facility of horrors where aliens are experimenting on humans. Could it be real? See you soon. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years.